speaking, if we have time, we'll come up and do beautiful. Test. Pasta. Pasta. CCI. <laughs> Happy Sunday to you guys. It's a special Sunday, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, welcome Fred when he comes back. He's a new face to the to CCI, so welcome him when he comes back. Um, exciting week. Um, I actually forgot to say a happy birthday to Auntie Marilyn Tompkins, so everybody wish her a happy birthday. I'll talk to you later so we can get you a special, a special cake. Um, we have another birthday coming up this week. Mr. Tony Khalil. Oh. If I ever miss your birthday or your anniversary, please let me know. I'm not perfect, but Tony's birthday is coming up on Thursday, so we will celebrate down at Camp Mokalia on Sunday. I'll figure out what's his favorite cake. Egyptian cake? What's an Egyptian cake? It's what? Oh, How <laughs> what? They have? Do they have coconut trees in Egypt? I'm just asking. I don't even know. Don't worry, Tony. We'll celebrate you on Sunday, though. Okay? So happy birthday to you. Uh, prayer warriors, keep praying for Grandma Aggie. The Tavarises, everybody that you don't see that, that used to come here regularly, I want you guys to just pray for them. Um, the anointing is over all of you to be prayer warriors. So if you know anybody in your extended family, your friends, make sure you're always praying. We are going to have prayer night the first Tuesday of September. So just gear up your prayers. If you have anything that you want to address now, make sure you see one of our elders or myself so we can pray for you guys. Um, I encourage all of you guys to just be open about receiving prayer because prayer works. Amen? Amen. Thank you. So we have a, a big... So Wednesday is going to be our work day coming up on Wednesday. So pastor said make sure you wear all your hammer giant clothes. It's okay if you get pukas, but not big pukas, okay? So Wednesday we're going to um, actually load up whatever we need for camp. If anybody has any other questions, let me know. Um, I'm excited because... Camp is officially, wait, what is today? Sunday. Are we five days away now? Yes. Yes. Yes, it's Friday. Uh, Leanne, can you hit the lights for me? Okay, so Ari has this special thing. Oh, Ari, we got to change the color maybe. Okay, so anyways, we like to get all the pictures of camp because each of us have our own eyeballs to capture all these memories. So Ari made a hashtag. Are you, are you correcting it as we speak? Yeah, the Okay, you see right there, it says hashtag CCI Family Camp 2015 or hashtag CCI Family Camp. And the reason why Ari is doing that is because we actually make a slideshow for you guys after camp is over. So you guys can see all the funny moments and the memories that we make at camp. This is actually our fourth... No, this is our fourth annual CCI Family Camp. So this is going to be your first time. I'm telling you, it's going to be so amazing, so much fun. And it's always a joy to worship with you guys and fellowship elsewhere in the National Sanctuary. It's always good to fellowship here, but it's a different atmosphere. It's a different time to fellowship together. So make sure you guys are there. We're all meeting at Friday, 4 p.m. If you can't make it at 4 p.m., don't worry. Just drive safe. Make sure you have a stress ball if you're going to be traveling all the way from this side going that way. 
because traffic is going to be horrendous. It always is, never fails. But if you can, take the day off, come early, you know, call a pastor if you need a ride. Oh, see, he said, yeah. See, that was all Holy Spirit because he didn't tell me to say that. I just said it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I have heavy duty straps, you know. You know, they're the kind. Yeah. <laughs> Why, your bike can do what? 200. 200 miles per hour. So he'll be the first one there at 3.30 while all of us will be fashionably late at 4.30. But anyways, um, I'm, I'm excited to see you guys there on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So if you know anybody that's gonna, that can't make it but they want to come to church, just let them know that Sunday service will be at camp. I'm serious. I'm excited. I've been looking forward to this all year long. So I said take lots of pictures. We're going to have some games. I already talked to Lillian. I know. Guys, I'm excited too. I just, I'm getting recorded right now, so I can't really, you know, do my happy dance. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? The Six Flags guy? He ain't got nothing on this. Anyways... Yeah, I'm just really excited, guys. Make sure you guys get ready for camp. Get all your things ready. Pack now. No one doesn't know, but I already packed for us. <laughs> Pack last week. Okay. Well, today's a special Sunday because we have a woman that's coming up here to talk. And we're not talking about any, any old woman. We're not talking any lady. Hey. Guys, that wasn't a, that wasn't a joke she's actually a really young lady but um you guys are killing me no it's not Ari hey she is going to speak one day though Ari she went Pfft. don't doubt the Lord Wow, she's going to be like Peter I'm ready to talk give me a Sunday Okay, so anyways, so there's this little lady, she goes by the name of Lillian, but for those of you that don't know, don't, don't be deceived, she's a little mighty lady of the Lord. So before she comes up here and talks to you guys, I was here at the first service, I just have to say buckle up. I already prepped you guys on Facebook, I told you guys to buckle up, because she's, she's an awesome, awesome speaker, she's an awesome prayer warrior. But before she comes up here, we like to take the Lord's tithes and offerings as we call up Miss Jessica, soon to be Ahmad.
for that man the Holy Spirit moving very powerfully thank you Lord you know about 10 years ago uh, when we were restarting this church Richard and I were just uh, reconnecting uh, he told me he was getting married and uh, he brought uh, Lillian uh, Sakahara uh, to the house and you know she's you can see her she's only this big and you know she's real tiny and I didn't know her real well and I uh, uh, Kahale everything in me wanted to warn her you know <laughs> that and, and I didn't and I knew she wasn't gonna receive prophecy yet because she wasn't really there but you know at times you just have to pray Lord you know your protection your 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 covering your the shield of your favor will you defend her and look she has, you know, survived. And, in, and, and through the years, she has ministered to our family uh, here uh, at our church so wonderfully. She is one of the most beloved people I have ever met. Uh, you know, it, it, it is rare. Uh, I, I'm not a big-time gossiper. I, I, I hate gossip. I, I don't like it. But, you know, people always come to me and tell me stuff. You know, Marilyn, I have never heard one person ever, ever in 10 years say anything but glowing and loving things about her you know and I and, and and everybody gets mixed reviews including myself but this one never never ever ever and for good reason too she's been a blessing to Richard and her entire household her daughter-in-law who just 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 danced and she's been a blessing to us as well and so would you please put your hands together and welcome our senior elders wife Lillian Bowles as she comes to give the word 
And by the way, when Jessica was dancing, I was looking at Kella's face, and I, I want to say he was like totally worshiping, but it looked different <laughs> to me. Anyway, okay. Good morning. You know, when I gave my, um, the uh, first service, um, I didn't really get choked up, but watching Jessica is very, um, very emotional. So thank you, Jess. Oh, oops, not in order. Okay, so... Um, thing? Oh, I feel like Janet Jackson. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, you know, when I, when I found out I had to, I was going to come up here and give the sermon, I got, ah, oh, I got all nervous, right? Um, and actually fearful, right? You know, kind of, ooh, scary. Um, but I have to remind myself that um, my fear of God is even greater. But anyway, uh, so I kind of wasn't sure like you know what I was going to talk about but it didn't take me you know very long before I realized that I I need to um uh give my testimony you know um I've never done it before ever well aside from the eight o'clock service um but it was something that you know I never really shared and um it's something that each and every one of you has but it's something that, for me, I have to give it. Because, you know, if anyone else were to give it, it just wouldn't have the same effect, yeah? So, there are people, I'm sure you folks have in your lives, that you've um, prayed over. You know, people that, in your lives, that uh, you shared the gospel with. And um, for some people, you know, the results, the visible results, anyway, might be immediate. But for other people, like myself, it takes a really long time, really long time. Um, and, uh, you know, for me, uh, I was, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I was born in Japan. I was born in Okinawa. Both my parents are Okinawan, so I was pretty much raised Buddhist, you know, um, and we did the incense thing, and you know, I didn't really know what it meant. Um, to me, Buddha was just, you know, this fat person. I, I, I didn't know anything about it. And um, I guess I associated those things as being more, um, like, cultural, I guess. You know, things that Japanese people did. So, <clears throat> um, how is it that someone like me um, you know, born and raised in Japan, get led to Jesus, right? I mean, how does that happen? And um, and it's not, it wasn't through Richard, because I didn't get to know Richard until like years later, but it was actually something that happened um, when I was very little, and I was still living in Okinawa, and um uh, I don't remember all the details, but what I do remember is um, I was sitting on this woman's lap, you know, this Caucasian woman. She was uh, reading stories to me, and um, at one point she stopped, and she, she asked me if I wanted Jesus to come into my heart. Um, I didn't know what she was talking about, so I said no. But, and, and I think she kind of knew that. So, um, you know, she prayed anyway. She prayed. And I kind of remember, you know, saying the words, you know, saying the prayer after her. But, um, you know, I didn't think much of it, right? And it wasn't until years later that, um, for me, I do believe that it was that woman who was responsible. And it was her that, planted that seed in me. And um, because growing up, you know, for someone like me who's never, ever been to church, in my heart and in my mind, there was always God. You know, it, it was God that I talked to. It was God that I prayed to. And, um, you know, it 
to me, there was no other explanation. And um, in Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through 29, this is the parable of the growing seed. I'm going to read it so you folks don't have to, um, you guys can follow, but you don't have to look. This is from the NIV. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. So, you know, whether the seed sprouts or grows, it's God that makes it grow. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, <clears throat> and I'm, this is, uh, again, from the NIV. This is where Paul is um, addressing the Corinthian church and its leaders. This is in verse 3. You are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere humans? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not mere human beings? What, after all, is Apollos, and what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. Um, so, you know, even like a farmer who plants a seed in the soil, you know, he can tend to it, he can water it, but he can't force it to grow. It's God that'll make it grow. And similarly, you know, for people, you know, we can plant seeds in people's hearts, but ultimately, it's God that's going to make it grow. We can't force it on people. And yet, you know, he understands that there's a significance in doing the planting and the seed uh, watering. I mean, that's what we're called to do. In verse 8, it continues on to say, the one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. Um, for me, uh, I did have people, you know, in my life that watered the seed for me. Um, there was uh, this, uh, my brother's friend, who in high school um, gave me my first Bible, and uh, I didn't read it, but, you know, he, he was trying to, you know, reach out. Um, and then I also had this, I mean, we, I had more, but just these two in, in, in particular. There was this one woman who, um, a coworker of mine, who had, um, who invited me to go to tea with a bunch of her church ladies. Um, I went, you know, I, I went, and we all sat around and, you know, drank our little tea. And yeah, <laughs> it, you know, that was not my cup of tea. I, especially for me, you know, at that time in my life, I was, you know, I, wouldn't, I wasn't really, you know, a good person, so to speak. I, um, you know, I smoked, I drank, I, I did drugs or whatever. And then, you know, so it wasn't a good place. It, I wasn't in a good place. And I had this, you know, misconception that for me to go to church, I had to be this good girl. You know, you have to be good. You have to clean up your act before you get to church, right? Um, so that's when I met Richard. <laughs> and he just, you know, I mean, we all know Richard, right? He's, he's just this, he's so real. And um, he's, 
He's loving. Yes. He's loving. He's funny, right? And um, you know, he wasn't. I guess for me, he wasn't that stereotypical uh, Christian who, that I thought you had to be so perfect and so holy, right? And um, you know, he made me realize that it can just be anybody. You know, you don't have to be this stuffy, you know, person. So anyway, um, when I first came to, uh, so this was, you know, Richard then reconnected with Wendell. And then, so coming to CCI really is the first church I, you know, ever came to. And, um, and even then, you know, we were kind of like, like living in sin, right? We weren't really married at that time but um, every weekend fr- uh, Saturday and Sunday from morning I mean really early in the morning till late at night all we did was fish we were fishing every single weekend you know and then I remember him telling me oh um, you know we should check out you know Pastor Wendell we should come he's coming back to Hawaii we have to come to church right so I thought oh, okay <coughs> So I came, and, um, you know, I remember feeling weird, you know, I felt awkward. I kind of didn't know what to expect, Um, but, you know, hearing Pastor Wendell's sermon on Sundays, it just kept me coming back, because every single Sunday, every sermon that he gave, um, it was, it was as if it was written just for me. It was written specifically for something that either I was experiencing, it was either something I was struggling with or I was thinking about. It was always dead on. Every single, every single one. Um, and I even was starting to think that, you know, I was getting suspicious <laughs> that Richard was talking to Pastor Wendell and he was writing this just for me. And I felt all the eyeballs on me, you know, I felt very, um, but it kept me coming because, um, you know, in that sense, I, I felt like I was learning so much, you know, from him. And it was um, God, uh, you know, through him, saying what just what I really needed to hear and to keep me coming back you know so um for me I I I kind of likened my uh journey to this uh article that I read about the Chinese bamboo plant Uh, so from the seed when from the time that it's planted in the soil I guess how long it takes before you start to see it grow. It's five years. Yeah, five years. And then when it starts to grow, it just shoots up to 80, 90 feet in six weeks. You know? So you think to yourself, well, what was it doing for those past five years? Was it just dormant? Well, no, it was growing the roots that would one day sustain that 80, 90 foot plant. You know, so my message to all of you is um, to continue to pray for people and to continue to plant seeds, continue to water because that's what we were all called to do. And even if you don't see the effects of it right away, um, for some people, it, it takes time. And it'll happen, you know? That's, that's my message. <laughs> oh. Amen. How many of you are blessed by that? Say amen. amen. Wow, that's amazing. This thing is picking up my voice, even from way down there. <laughs> But anyway, at, uh, uh, at the 8.30, I asked oh, yeah, you the same right. thing. Uh, maybe some of you are feeling impatient or frustrated that maybe you don't see the fruit in your life that you wish was there. 
you wish God would kind of hurry up, but the Lord is actually working in you. And so I'm going to ask Lillian, who has been through this, to pray a blessing on you right now. To pray encouragement for you and comfort. To just trust that God is working on your roots. And building you up strong. And when the season comes, 90 feet. Amen? Go ahead, pray for the people. Again, <clears throat> Everyone can um, bow their heads and close their eyes. Father God, Lord, you're awesome. And we know that through you, everything is possible. And that there's nothing that's impossible, Lord. And Father, lift everyone here. Lift their spirits, Lord. Give them encouragement. Give, increase their faith, their hope, and their trust, Lord, that whatever it is that we ask in your name, that it'll happen. We love you, and we thank you. Amen. 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 Somebody say praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's all stand up. You know this one. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's our rock. He's our fortress. He's our deliverer. In Him will we trust. Praise the name of Jesus. You sing it to Him now. I praise Your name, Lord Jesus. I praise Your name. Lord Jesus, oh, you are my rock, you are my fortress, you're my deliverer, in you will I trust, praise your name, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. So we are going to take a break now. Uh, we're bringing lunch in for you. Uh, uh, and then we're going to work on all the stuff that Pastor Matt has for us. So please hang around. Help out. We're getting ready for family camp. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.